Hey guys, real quick before hopping into this week's episode, I just wanted to let you know that Jordan and I are super excited to be attending the US Sailboat Show in Annapolis this coming October. And we've got a ton of really fun events and sign-up sheets, so if you want more information about that, stick around to the end of the episode. Also, we're even more pumped because we finally have Atticus One listed for sale. So if you've been chomping at the bit to make Atticus One your new home, stick around to the end of the video for more information. Other than that, enjoy the episode. I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. And this is Captain Oso, the little dude. Seven years ago, we bought a super neglected, really small sailboat that we called Atticus with the dream of seeing the world. We, uh, for better or worse, own this boat now. Over the next seven years, we spent a lot of time fixing up Atticus, but we also did boat work for money in Mexico, <laughs> traded lobster for rum in Cuba, dodged pirates off of Nicaragua, and lived off grid in Panama during the pandemic. It's better than I thought it would be, you know? Through it all, we made a ton of mistakes and faced a lot of fear, doubt, and insecurity. It's okay, buddy. But we also learned that if we rely on each other and just don't give up, that we can accomplish more than we ever imagined. Recently, we upgraded to our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, and are now exploring the coast of Maine. Last week, we took my folks on their first cruising experience through Casco Bay. And I didn't puke. Good job, Rita. And we're now sailing back to our home base at Director Robin Hood Marina. There were lobster pots everywhere. There are lots of shoals and rocky areas. Good way to wake up. <laughs> Woo, I'm alive. Are you the captain? Oh yeah, just take it easy, buddy. Take it easy. <laughs> You know what, I'm literally getting the chills. I think from being 90 some degrees and now it's, now it's 70 nice cool. something, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Oh, he was adorable. Yeah. His little dark eyes. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, what a gorgeous day today. Woo! Woo! Man, this is awesome. We're doing over seven knots. Just barely healing over, just a little bit. This is like dream sailing, you know? Yeah. Well, that was an intense like minute. <laughs> so we weren't able to film it, but we got all of a sudden a real strong gust of wind. And so the boat just healed a lot suddenly. I went off autopilot and headed up. And then once we got into the wind, the boat flattened out. But in the meantime, my mom was laying on the high side on the settee and <laughs> just slid right off. <laughs> and ended up in the cabin soul down there. How's everything down here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a better side now. Yes, what Jordan said. Because yeah. I was laying there. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know, but that was startling, huh? I know, yeah, yeah. How'd you guys fare up here? We were fine up here. Yeah, that's good. Wow, Oso's in heaven. He loves a V-birth. <laughs> you having a good time with your buddy? Ooh, that was an adrenaline rush. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad. No one hurt, got hurt? Nope. No, nope. we're good. Yep. Hey, Oso. Hi. How's the little dude doing? Look at that ass. Look at his ears. He's just chilling, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is one of them right here. Okay, hold it like that if you can. 
again. All right, so now we're gonna head on over to the Five Islands Lobster Company, which is the main reason that we came here, other than the fact that it's just a really beautiful little harbor. They have super good lobster, and it comes right from the source, because you can see there's several commercial lobster boats in this bay, and I think they just offload directly to the restaurant. So let's go check it out. Yeah. So, like, as much lobster as we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Got two soft shell cooked lobsters. Uh, and what is a soft shell versus a hard shell? Soft shell is a lobster that have just shed his shell, so he's easy to break into and he's quite soft to the touch. Uh -huh. So most of the time you can just break your and use your hands to break them right open. But the reason why there's a little less meat, because there's still a layer of water in between the meat and the shell, but it's still growing into it. Yeah, so gotcha. the, Yeah, but it does tend to be a little sweeter, a little more tender, whereas hard shells are completely grown into. You get the fully fold out claws, but it isn't. You don't get that same tenderness or sweetness you do with sauce. Got it. Okay. Awesome, thanks a lot guys, I really appreciate it. Okay, right. let's do it. Yeah. Let's eat some lobster. It is tasty. Makes trying to miss all those lobster pots a little bit easier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well said, big guy. <laughs> okay, I'm going for the tail. Ah, oh, come on, be careful. Look out, Mom. <laughs> I like this stuff. Look, there's some up here. <laughs> okay, so we've been told that you can eat no, not me. the green stuff. <laughs> nope. Or you cannot eat the green stuff. Not. What do you think, bud? We, we I... chose to believe you could not eat the green stuff. Mm. <laughs> Steve, you want to try it? No. No, thank you. Yeah, it's just it's, a... it's just lobster poop. <laughs> oh, come on! I, I it's just believe lobster you. poop. It is? What's so bad about that? Is it poop? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's undigested poop. Oh, yeah. sure. you're, you're eating. That's enough. We've ruined her. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite so. food now, Rita? <laughs> I'm not sure. Cheeseburger. <laughs> Cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, well, my heart is breaking right now. I just said goodbye to my two buds for extra cute this morning <laughs> and I'm saying goodbye to this amazing Maine weather. It's just like the perfect morning. There's a little bit of fog on the water um, but the sun's peeking out and I'm saying goodbye to all of these because I am on my way back to Panama to get Atticus One sorted. So we kind of left in a hurry um, to get back to the States last year to start looking for Atticus Two and we weren't really sure what was gonna happen. <laughs> so we're lucky that we found a new home, um, but now it's time to take care of our first home, which took such good care of us. So I'm heading back to the tropics. We've left Atticus on her own for eight months. <laughs> so I'm a little bit nervous about what I'll find, um, but hopefully nothing too crazy. And the plan is just to empty out the boat and try to figure out how to ship whatever we need for this boat back from Panama to the States. And we've got a ton of boat projects that we really need to get a handle on before we have to start sailing south for the winter. So while I'm in Panama, Jordan is gonna be staying in Maine and really tackling a lot of our priority boat projects. Um, also, because I am gonna be flying to Panama on my own, I decided to call in a ringer, my mom. <laughs> so she's gonna meet me in Panama and we're gonna tackle Atticus One together. All right. 
Okay, well, I made it to Panama, and we are rounding the corner to see Atticus on the hard for the first time in eight months. Kind of nervous what we're gonna find. Doesn't look too bad on the outside. I thought it'd, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's head up and see how she's doing. It's kind of weird to be back, man. Oh, I've actually really missed this boat. It feels so small compared to Atticus too, like, <laughs> especially the mizzen sail. I feel like I could just really manhandle this thing. <laughs> See what we got going. <laughs> All right, looks like they've got a um, dehumidifier going woo, for us, which is really nice. I like forgot how steep those stairs are. This is weird, like I feel like when you become so accustomed to a place, you could basically walk from one side of the boat to the other with your eyes closed, you know? <laughs> You just, it's just muscle memory. I just tripped <laughs> coming down the stairs because they're so steep, man. <laughs> Pile of stuff in the V-berth. <laughs> Yikes. Pile of stuff in the bathroom. All right, well, it's better than I thought it would be, but it seems like we've got some work to do, Ma. We're gonna have to empty out this boat. <laughs> yeah, it feels different, it feels like I'm noticing the size. I remember when we used to have guests over on Atticus. <laughs> You'd see their faces as they like came down below, kind of like, this is it? Is there another room somewhere? <laughs> so anyways, yeah, it does feel smaller than I anticipated. I'm getting that like shock of how teeny everything is, but it also does feel like home. You guys made, mem made memories here and it's, uh, it's so nice to where you began and how you learn to do so many things, you know, how everything works because of this little boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little emotional, but yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I have my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it's a nice boat. Yeah. It's a little, little boat, but uh, I think whoever gets this boat will get a lot of memories and a lot of, uh, happiness in this little boat yeah yeah you know it's funny that you got so attached to it too because because when we yeah when we first got the boat you were like Ooh, that thing's small and kind of weird yeah well yeah <laughs> but but now you love it <laughs> right <laughs> and now you're attached to it <laughs> turn it off like <laughs> all right well Kind of taking it slow to begin with as I kind of organize my headspace. Um, but the first thing I'm doing is just making a pile of things I want to donate. And then I've got definitely going home bag. And then on this side, I've got a I'll check with Jordan bag. This was our very first Cruising World article. <laughs> it's, we've had it on the boat for like six years now. So keeping this baby. Oh yeah, this is my measuring book. Yeah, this is, I was doing measurements to do a full enclosure for the cockpit before our Pacific crossing. How funny. Oh, and that's the Dodger. Going to the trash. <laughs> Ugh, and man, this is so sad. The, whoever gets Atticus 2 is getting a brand new Power Survivor Katadin water maker. This thing is badass. <laughs> and we literally just installed it right before we found out that we wanted to sell Atticus. So this is this is pretty awesome and it's already installed. So I'm gonna leave this here for the new Atticus 2 owners. <laughs> Let's see what mysteries we have in here. <laughs> yes. Oh, actually, all of our French Polynesia cruising guides, I think we might wanna I think you hold on to these. Jordan in his free time reads a lot of nautical books. Nurse <laughs> manual, like that. The Rigger's Apprentice, it's really good. I'm gonna leave this for the new owners because it's a really good book. Yeah, 
yeah, it's tough. Even living on a 30-foot boat, we've kind of like hoarded a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have, so. That's trash, I think. Yeah, okay, we got, well, we have a lot of trash. Yeah, in fact, do you want to go for a walk and dump the trash with me? Yeah. Oh, is it heavy? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just take your time. Okay. You got it? Got it. Okay. Oh, it feels nice, the rain. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, almost there. Okay, let's go, muscle woman. One, two, three. <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah, all right, more trash. <laughs> all right, day two of cleaning. My mom and I kind of got the main cabin sort of empty. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna handle the bathroom today. So anyways, it is a hot day in Panama. Kind of missing that main cool fog feel. <laughs> How did we do in here so far, Ma? I think we did great. Uh -huh. We are really advancing. We, this is our second day. Uh -huh. And I thought our first day was just gonna, we're not gonna be able to do much, but we actually, we did move forward uh, quite a bit. It may not seem like it, we did, but we really have. And this tiny little boat really <laughs> has a lot of storage everywhere. And it's extremely hot here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's why I'm on my bathing suit. Luckily, Shelter Bay Marina has got a really nice pool. So maybe at lunchtime, we'll go hop in. Bathroom's pretty much done. That was actually probably the easiest room so far. Now I'm going to tackle Levy Birth. Well, the inside of the boat still looks a little bit like a disaster. And you might be fooled that we haven't made a lot of progress, but we've taken down so many bags of things to donate. And it's actually very liberating because there are so many things that I've been holding on to for years. And I'm like, maybe one day I'll use this. Um, but I have not used it, so it is time to go. But yeah, it's funny because the more time I spend on Atticus, the more it does feel like home again. And I'm kind of being able to go through the boat again without like tripping on things. <laughs> and even just sitting here under the Dodger, I can remember what it was like living on this boat and sailing to new places and being stuck in bad weather <laughs> uh, and really awesome weather. So yeah, it's kind of funny. How's everything going on your end, Ma? Ah. Okay, yeah. I just had to take a dip in the pool. Oh, nice, did you? Oh, yeah. you feel good. <laughs> All right, well, it is day three cleaning up Atticus, and today is kind of a tough day because I'm going through all of our spare parts um, and like kind of like spare tools and materials. And so I'm not really sure what to keep and what to donate um, and what to leave with the new owners. So I'm gonna give Jordan a call and just go through this pile of stuff. Okay, so I've got your, like a spare O-ring kit. Definitely bring that. Okay, there's a bunch of stainless steel hose clamps. Keep them. We've got a whole spool of extra wire. Keep it. Then we've got, yeah. it looks like um, a fuel line. Yeah, you can you can keep that. I'll leave the prop with the dinghy. There's a three, three blade extra prop. Okay, then we've got uh, LED um, backup lighting, uh, like a spool. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Should we bother with stuff like that? Because it's like we might use it someday, you know? I don't and think... It also might just create clutter. Yeah, I don't think so because the one thing I learned, like, cleaning out Atticus is, like, we kept so much stuff yeah. that we don't need. There's a galley service kit for the whale gusher, so I'll leave that. Yeah, so for those, uh -huh. definitely keep those. Then there's this, like, toggle switch, it looks like. It's made in Mexico. Yeah, it's an electrical toggle switch. Go ahead and keep it. Lots of stuff. Making some headway. We're getting there. <laughs> what you working on? Yeah, I don't even know what these are. <laughs> you know, they're so small I can't even put them in the in the in the container because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I am greasing them uh -huh. with this uh, corrosion block. Uh huh. And uh, 
wash them first, dry them, then I put this on. <laughs> and then I put them in the container. I don't know. At least they won't be corroded. We've made a lot of progress on the interior of the boat, and today I'm moving out to the cockpit lockers, which is Jordan's territory, so I'm a little bit nervous because I know we have a lot of tools. So, let's get in there. How you doing over there, Ma? Greasy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're over the day one and two excitement hump. Yeah. Day three is a little bit more daunting. I just look around and I'm like, oh my God, there's so much stuff. Well, this is day four. So today is a big day. We are going to take everything that's on the boat and move it off the boat. Um, and I'm really excited to just have the boat cleared. It's gonna be a really long, hot day. Well, it may not look like it to you, but the boat is almost empty. I'm literally just waiting on Jordan to uh, call me back. I sent him a couple of videos with just last minute bits and pieces that I'm not sure really how we want to organize. So as soon as he calls me back, I'll have everything sorted and then everything off the boat. So call me back, Jordan. It is uh, 5.30 and I am so freaking pooped. Hopefully by the end of tomorrow, we can have the boat totally empty and just wash every single nook and cranny from top to bottom. After that point, I really want to, I'm gonna start crying thinking about it. I really want to have a glass of wine right here <laughs> and say goodbye. Ooh. Day five, final stretch. Basically only have these last things to uh, take off the boat and then we're going to clean it from top to bottom. So huh, I can't believe we actually accomplished our goal. Knock on some wood, because we're not there yet. All right, making progress. That's heavy. All right, well, we got everything off the boat. So we're just kind of honoring Atticus by cleaning the crap out of her. <laughs> Gracias por su ayuda. <laughs> <laughs> and we lucked out big time because our friend Juanjo, the manager of Shelter Bay Marina, arranged for our things to be put on a boat that's being shipped back to the States. And in the meantime, he's letting us keep our stuff in his storage unit. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Juanjo. I've been through kind of like an emotional roller coaster coming back to Atticus. Initially, I came aboard and I was like, wow, I cannot believe we lived in this boat for six years and went so far on this little thing but the more that I've spent just kind of getting intimate with each nook and cranny I kind of start to remember all these awesome memories and yeah, yeah. feels feels <laughs> like home again and cheers <laughs> yeah. well thank you for all your help you're welcome you shouldn't have done it without you you're a good mom. Hmm. Remember the first time you saw Atticus? Yeah. What did you think of it? Oh my God. <laughs> did you think, what, what has she done? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh my God. Uh, what Atticus. changed your mind? It really, all I just saw the, the hard work that you guys did. 
You know, and it took you a long time, many years, mm -hmm. in Key West. Mm -hmm. um, and to survive, you guys were working, and at the, and at the same time, you were working in the boat. So Remember when we made those curtains? Yeah. <laughs> I remember you didn't even know how to sew. Mm -hmm. Cheers to Atticus. Cheers, Atticus. I'm to whoever makes Atticus their new home. I hope you have many adventures and memories and highs. And you'll probably have a couple of lows because it is a sailboat. But mm -hmm. I hope you'll learn and grow and see lots of cool things. <laughs> so if you're looking for a boat and a dream, send me an email at iwantatticus at gmail.com. All right, well, Atticus is pretty much ready for her new owners. So I figured I'd give you guys my final tour of Atticus 1 with hopes that whoever Atticus 1 ends up with um, will take really good care of her because she'll take really good care of you. We've got nice settee area, and this is also where we sleep when we're on passage. I've got a lee cloth tucked away in there, ready for you to go. The galley is ready for the next chef. We've got a gimbaled stove. I also left you my Omnia stovetop oven in case you uh, like brownies while you're in the middle of nowhere like I do. If you're not familiar with Atticus, we've also got a manual pump for the uh, fresh water and salt water intake when you do your dishes. You also have a basically brand new, this is a refurbished angle refrigerator, so pretty much brand new. And probably one of the coolest features of Atticus One is a brand spanking new Katadin water maker, which Jordan just installed because we were getting ready to cross the Pacific. And if you want a really in-depth rundown of all of the systems on Atticus and how we managed to live off-grid for seven years on this 30-foot boat, definitely check out this video, which I'll link to up here, which is all about all of our systems. Got your starboard set T. We've got le bathroom, le head. And this is the bulkhead that changed our lives. Um, if you haven't seen that episode yet, uh, go ahead and check it out here or here. Um, but essentially we found a bunch of termite damage in our primary bulkhead, um, which led us to ultimately sell Atticus 1. Um, it is a project that is doable. It's just something that was not the best decision for us at the time. Um, so full transparency, if you buy Atticus 1, you've got this bulkhead waiting for you. <laughs> Directly across the head, we've got the biggest storage locker aside from the cockpit lockers in here. Jordan's fancy table, which hinges up. And moving on to the V-berth. This was my favorite place in the whole world for seven years. For a 30-foot boat, this V-berth is pretty ginormous. We've also got these security bars up here, which Jordan custom made in Panama. Um, and they just help me sleep at night and they keep us real safe. Along those lines, I've also left our companionway security bars, so they're up here. Just slide them in like that. And this is the heart of Atticus. Um, this is a six-year-old, 25 horsepower Beta Marine diesel engine. Um, and this baby has kept us really safe in really kind of hairy situations. And Jordan has taken super meticulous care of it. So this is pretty much the interior of Atticus in a nutshell. The exterior the interior of Atticus is where we put a lot of love and sweat and blood and tears. When we bought Atticus, she was pretty neglected, um, and so we just took all of her paint systems down to gel coat and repainted everything with uh, all grip and all craft. Yeah, it's really lasted well over the years. We're really happy with it. Moving on deck, we've got, woo, first and foremost, our hard dodger that Jordan and I made on the dock in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, <laughs> while working for other cruisers, doing fiberglass and painting jobs, and I was doing a lot of sewing work. So this was our <laughs> kind of after hours project. And we've also got two flexible solar panels on it, as well as two rigid solar panels. One's on that side, one's over there. We've got all new sails on Atticus, except for the main sail, and the mizzen sail, and those were brand new in 2012, um, and we always cover them up, so they're in really great condition. We've got a brand new roller furled uh, Genoa. 
Uh, we also installed a brand new uh, mizzen boom. We've got a brand new Selden whisker pole. Jordan installed this for movable uh, Solent stay. We've got our Mantis storm anchor, got our manual windlass. I also made a huge sunshade and so it essentially creates kind of like a living room in the cockpit of the boat when it's really hot or when it's raining. All right, well, time is a ticking. So I'm gonna head back to our room and start bringing all of our bags down Ugh, and say goodbye to Atticus once and for all. This is the last time I'll ever do this. Atticus, take care of your next crew. Thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. If you're sitting there thinking, I would love to make Atticus One my new home, shoot me an email at Iwantatticus at gmail.com and include your offer in the title of the email. Also, if you wanna check out the complete listing of Atticus, you can go to projectatticus.com backslash buy Atticus. And I'll put that link in the description below. And now hopping into the Annapolis sailboat show, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, you can use the promo code Atticus2021 to get $5 off. Also, Jordan and I are gonna be hosting a boat buying seminar, um, and we're gonna go over all of the nitty gritty things that we've learned, things that we wish we knew uh, about buying a used blue water sailboat. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the link in the description below. Also today we are launching our limited edition boat show t-shirt. So if you wanna show your Atticus love and be twinsies with us at the boat show, definitely check out that link, which I'll include in the description below. And if you wanna get your t-shirt before the boat show, make sure you put in your order before the 25th uh, and get rush delivery to make sure you get it in time. And finally, we're gonna be hosting two viewer only sales on the Schooner Woodwind. So it'll be a really awesome opportunity for us to get to know you on a really beautiful boat and explore the Annapolis waterfront. So if you're interested in hopping on a sail with us, we'll link to more information in the description below. Also, we've got a bunch of patron only events that we're gonna be hosting at the boat show. So if you are a patron, first of all, thank you so much for supporting our video and we'll be posting more about those events on our patron-only Facebook group. And if you're not a patron, but you've been considering becoming one, now is a great time so you can hop on these events. So if you can't tell, we are really excited about the boat show this year, and we hope you can make it, and we hope we get to meet you and get boaty with you. Other than that, we'll see you next week.